a win in your end scenario. Rex, I I'm curious about how you would look at this through the lens of D'Amico, because not only is it your first year as a head coach, but you got a rookie quarterback. Right. You've lived this reality. What do you remember about the challenges that that presents? Well, I mean, first off, being a, a rookie head coach, it's like, man, I mean, you're, you're the guy that's making all the, the organizational moves, like the, hey, here's our practice schedule, yep. here's this, here's that, here's, here's when we meet, here's how we're traveling. You're, you're doing it all. When you get a snack, and important when, stuff like when that. When you get a snack. <laughs> that, that's, that's, I, that is very important. important it's very important. Absolutely. And then there's, but everything about it. All the moves, it, it's, it's, it's crazy. And I was actually, you know, coaching the defense, and I'm sure D'Amico's got a heavy hand in that as well. Mm -hmm. But you also have a rookie quarterback, yeah. mm -hmm. and he's doing it for the first time. And mm -hmm. here's the thing, and RG3 had a great rookie year, yeah. but here's the thing. Like, this is a game plan specific league. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's way different than any of these young quarterbacks. They come in, they're running a system, Scott. Mm -hmm. Now it's a week to week. Oh, by the way, that was great first week. Here's second week, and it's way different. Like the job D'Amico Ryan's and his staff yeah. have done. And by the way, this young quarterback, this is probably the the greatest rookie quarterback performance, absolutely since this guy had his his breakout year. It is an amazing accomplishment, and and I don't think he's through yet. Mm -hmm. I really don't. I like and. It. You know, we were fortunate. We went to a championship game with a rookie head coach and, and a, uh, a rookie quarterback. Mm -hmm. But we also had the NFL's best defense. Yeah. Yeah. That helped. You can yeah. lean you on know, that. We can lean on that. We, I did take over a 23rd ranked defense. But anyway, <laughs> there you that's go. another Let story. Let them know, Rick. But, I, I mean, I'm telling you, the job this guy's done mm -hmm. is very similar because he, he inherited a defense that wasn't very good as yeah, well. He did. Mm -hmm. and, and he's flipped the defense and the offense in one year. Marcus, we get to this game, and it's a question of, I think, really, who do you, who do you trust more who, who do you look at and say I believe that, that this team will be that tonight who do you yeah, need to in there? any other world it would be different but I trust CJ Stroud and the Houston Texans more because I think this team has played YOLO football all season long YOLO. and when I say YOLO football it doesn't mean that they've they've been carefree they've been very strategic about where they're gonna go but their quarterback in a press conference after throwing three interceptions in the game we got the sound play it for us right now G Man, Steph Curry don't ever stop shooting. I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep him letting it ride, you know. Um, and I, and I'm, I don't got no shame in my game. I definitely got to be smarter, but um, I don't like, I don't. No confidence is taken away from me. I'm gonna keep letting it fly. To the room when the rookie <laughs> says that to the room, huh? Man, you, you talking about first of all the level of confidence in C.J. Stroud, but also Ryan knows this. I could follow this dude, oh, like, oh yeah, because oh. he gonna, he gonna take it when it's bad. And he's going to make sure that when it doesn't go bad, he'll be the first guy that he starts with. But to me, Scott, I remember sitting on, in studio after C.J. Stroud said that, and I cannot remember a lot of veterans having that type of confidence. Right. I've seen a lot of veterans say, I got to be better. I, I, I got to take care and value the football. CJ, no, I'm going to keep shooting. Mm -hmm. So for, for them to empower him as a rookie, give Slowick a lot of credit to the yeah. offensive coordinator. But you also look at D'Amico Rans in his first year. And, and the thing that people don't remember, D'Amico came from a winning culture. In San Francisco, San Francisco. Yep. he led a great defense in San Francisco. So this is not unbecoming. This was his expectation. But to have a rookie quarterback with that type of confidence means you have the right culture and the right guy that you drafted. C.J. Stroud is a rookie in experience, but not in the human that mm -hmm. he is that's playing the quarterback position. This is a young man that's faced a ton of adversity. But as far as the football field, we've seen C.J. Stroud in this sort of pressure moment before. Right. And I get that it was college, but you go back to Ohio. State, you remember there were all the questions about C.J. Stroud. Yeah, he's a pocket quarterback, but can he move? Well, we watched him in the college football playoff against Georgia absolutely lose his mind against what people thought was the best defense in the entire yeah. country. And C.J. Stroud was the best player on the field that night, and it wasn't even close. And so I think when the lights are brightest, that's when this young man steps up the most. But he's been that way the entire season. He's been unflappable as far as who he's been as a leader and the way that he's taking over this locker room. But the play on the field speaks for itself, and we've always seen it. It was just people on the outside having questions about this young man that they shouldn't have had.
And he had answers to the questions, frankly, because the tape you just showed was against Georgia after they spent a month hearing yep. about what he wasn't <laughs> following right. that mm -hmm. Michigan game. And then he went up against the best defense, ultimately a championship yep. team, and, and was the best player on the field. I think that that's a great point that you make. Obviously, the stakes are different. Yep. Robert, what can you show us tonight about sort of what this guy does in terms of dissecting and breaking down defense? Well, I think it's important to point out that he missed two games due to a concussion. And what's his offensive coordinator's name? Bobby Slowick. Slowick, Slowick, right? So he got him slowly back into the game plan. <laughs>